Across the vast tapestry of European history, one voice resonates from a past so distant it defies the very constructs of time. It is the language of the Basques, Euskara, an ancient tongue that stands as Europe's most profound linguistic anomaly. An isolated island in a turbulent sea of Indo-European phonemes and syntax. For centuries, its origins have baffled the keenest minds of linguists, historians, and archaeologists alike, raising a tantalizing question that has echoed through the corridors of scholarship. Where did this enigmatic tongue truly come from? And what profound secrets does it survive about Europe's distant, unwritten past? Unlike its numerous Romance and Germanic neighbors, which proudly display their intertwined genealogies, Euskara shares no discernible, verifiable links with any other living European language. It exists in splendid, mysterious isolation, a linguistic sentinel guarding secrets that precede the very foundations of modern Europe. This profound disjunction has led scholars time and again to classify it definitively as a language isolate, a term that conveys both its uniqueness and the immense challenge it poses to our understanding of linguistic evolution on the continent. Nestled primarily within the rugged, ancient embrace of the Pyrenees Mountains, a natural fortress that has cradled its culture for millennia, the Basque people have, against all odds, maintained their distinctive culture and, crucially, their singular language. They have stood as a steadfast bulwark against the relentless tides of linguistic shifts that have swept across the continent repeatedly, shaping and reshaping the tongues of countless peoples. This unparalleled persistence in the face of widespread linguistic assimilation is itself a monumental historical phenomenon, begging for deeper understanding. How did such an island of speech remain untouched when all around it linguistic landscapes were being perpetually redrawn? What inherent resilience lies within the fabric of Basque identity, within the very cadence of Uskara, that allowed it to survive where so many others faded into the silence of forgotten history? Past theories, born from generations of diligent scholarship and insightful speculation, have sought to bridge this profound historical chasm. One prominent hypothesis has posited Uskara as a direct descendant of Aquitanian, a language recorded in inscriptions and historical texts spoken in the southwestern regions of what is now France and northeastern Spain during the Roman era. This theory draws on geographical proximity and some linguistic similarities observed in the sparse remnants of Aquitanian. It suggests a lineage extending back to a period before the full Romanization of the Iberian Peninsula, hinting at a pre-Roman native linguistic substratum that may have resisted the imperial tongue. But even this connection, while academically compelling, has always felt like a tantalizing glimpse rather than a definitive answer, leaving much room for doubt and further inquiry. Another, even more intriguing and far-reaching hypothesis delves deeper into the stratigraphic layers of European history, proposing Uskara as a linguistic relic from an even older substratum. This perspective links the language to the enigmatic pre-Indo-European inhabitants of the Iberian Peninsula, suggesting a lineage that might stretch back to the monumental turning point in human history, the arrival of farming itself in Europe. Imagine, if you will, the echoes of a language spoken by those who first tilled the soil, who first built permanent settlements, shaping the very landscape and destiny of the continent. If this theory holds true, Uskana would be not merely old, but profoundly ancient, a living fossil of speech predating the vast majority of Europe's linguistic heritage. Yet, despite the intellectual allure of these theories, concrete, irrefutable evidence to definitively prove these connections has remained frustratingly elusive. This persistent void in our understanding of European linguistic evolution has perpetuated the Basque enigma, turning it into one of history's most enduring and fascinating unsolved mysteries.
a silent testament to the vast swaths of the past that remain beyond our grasp. The question of Uskara's ultimate origin has thus continued to loom large, an open invitation to new methods, new discoveries, and new ways of seeing the world. In our latest exploration here at Echoes of Time, we delve into how groundbreaking research in the burgeoning field of ancient DNA is not merely offering new insights, but is fundamentally revolutionizing this age-old enigma. For too long, the study of language and the study of human populations proceeded on parallel yet largely independent tracks. Now, the convergence of these disciplines, driven by the power of genetic archaeology, is beginning to illuminate connections previously unimaginable. Could the intricate genetic studies of ancient Basque populations, analyzing the very blueprints of life found in centuries-old bones and sediments, finally provide the missing pieces of this colossal puzzle? Could they reveal the migratory patterns, the ancestral links, or the demographic shifts that corroborate, challenge, or entirely rewrite existing linguistic hypotheses? The prospect is not just exciting, it is transformative, offering a tangible link between the human story encoded in our genes and the cultural narrative expressed through our words. One powerful perspective emerging from these genetic studies suggests a compelling and robust genetic continuity between the modern Basque people and the region's earliest agriculturalists. This is a profound finding, implying that Euskara might indeed be a direct descendant of a language spoken by Europe's very first farmers. Picture a lineage of speech unbroken for perhaps seven or eight millennia, passed down through generations who worked the same land, lived under the same skies, and adapted to the same challenging environment of the Pyrenees. If this genetic connection holds firm, it suggests an extraordinary degree of cultural and linguistic resilience, a deep-rooted identity that maintained its integrity even as waves of later migration swept across other parts of Europe. This scenario paints a picture of isolation and tenacity, where the arrival of new technologies and ways of life did not necessarily equate to a complete overhaul of language, but rather an absorption and continuation within a pre-existing linguistic framework. The echoes of these first agriculturalists, therefore, might not just be found in archaeological digs, but in the very words spoken by Basques today, a living link to the dawn of European civilization as we understand it. Yet, the tapestry of the past is rarely woven with a single thread. Another equally intriguing hypothesis, propelled by different interpretations of genetic markers, explores connections to even earlier human populations, the nomadic hunter-gatherers of the Mesolithic era. This proposition is even more audacious, suggesting that Uskara could be a linguistic relic, a direct survival, from a time before farming transformed human societies, a true echo from the Stone Age itself. Imagine a language that navigated the vast, ancient forests and plains of a wilder Europe, a tongue that described the hunt, the changing seasons, and the profound mysteries of a world untamed. If Uskara truly carries such deep roots, then its survival represents not just continuity, but an almost miraculous persistence, a cultural arc that traversed the great transition from hunting and gathering to agriculture, preserving a fragment of a linguistic world that has otherwise vanished without a trace. This hypothesis challenges us to reconsider the scale of linguistic longevity and the incredible resilience of human culture in the face of epical change. It speaks to a profound connection with the very earliest inhabitants of the continent, offering a tantalizing glimpse into the thoughts and communications of our distant ancestors. And then, a third, more complex and perhaps more nuanced view, rises from the intricate data proposing a possibility that acknowledges the layered nature of human history. This perspective considers the likelihood of multiple ancient influences converging over vast stretches of time to shape the unique Basque lineage and language we observe today, 
it suggests that the Basque genetic and linguistic profile might not be a monolithic inheritance from a single ancestral group, but rather a rich amalgam of different genetic components, each arriving at different periods, each contributing to a distinctive tapestry. Perhaps the earliest hunter-gatherers laid a foundational linguistic layer, which was then enriched or subtly altered by the arrival of the first farmers, and further influenced by subsequent, perhaps more limited, interactions or movements. This mosaic approach acknowledges the dynamic nature of human migration and cultural interaction, even in relatively isolated regions. It suggests that the Basque enigma is not a simple riddle with a single answer, but a profound historical narrative of convergence, adaptation, and singular persistence. A story of how diverse ancient currents flowed together to forge a uniquely enduring cultural identity. These scientific debates, unfolding in laboratories and archaeological sites across Europe, are far from mere academic exercises confined to dusty university halls. They are profound intellectual earthquakes, reshaping our fundamental understanding of deep European history. They are challenging long-held assumptions about population movements, about the mechanisms of cultural persistence, and about the very nature of how languages evolve, survive, or perish. The story of Euskara, once a singular linguistic anomaly, is now becoming a vital key to unlocking the broader human story of our continent. It forces us to confront the incredible depth of human history, to see the present not as an end point, but as a living testament to millennia of struggles, adaptations, and continuities. The answers gleaned from ancient DNA are not just about the Basques, they are about all of us, about the interwoven narratives that form the European past, and about the surprising ways in which the echoes of time can still resonate in the modern world. Join us then on Echoes of Time as we journey through archaeological discoveries and genetic blueprints, sifting through the layers of the past to uncover the profound story of the Basque people and their extraordinary enigmatic language. It is a quest for origins, a search for the deep roots of identity, and a testament to the enduring power of human speech. As we unravel the genetic threads and linguistic patterns, we are not just solving a mystery. We are connecting with the very essence of human continuity, revealing how the ancient past breathes life into our present. What other forgotten pages of history await our discovery, hiding secrets that will redefine our understanding of who we are and where we come from?